creating complex AR apps using AR kit. Section three, we have already got the flavor of augmented reality in the previous section. Now let's look at the options for creating native AR apps. This section will help you build markerless AR applications in iOS. First, we will create an AR based iOS application and later we will implement plane detection in the same app. Hence understanding the key differences in the implementations. Installing Xcode and introduction to Xcode interface and Swift. In this video, we are going to learn how to install Xcode. Then we will do a walkthrough of the Xcode editor. And finally, a brief introduction to Swift. The first step to install Xcode is to check your Mac OS version. For checking your Mac OS version, you need to click on the Apple icon in the top left corner of your screen. Select about this Mac. You will get a pop up window showing your Mac OS version. For me, it is Mac OS High Sierra. The version should be greater than 10.30. So you can either have Mac OS High Sierra or Mac OS Moabe. In case you have an OS version which is lower than this, then please upgrade your Mac OS version. The next step is to install Xcode from the App Store. For this, open Spotlight and type App Store. Once the App Store is open, search for Xcode. You can see that Xcode is already installed for me. If it is not installed in your machine, then you will see a Get option here. Click on Get and install Xcode. The Xcode version should be greater than 10.0. It is mandatory to have Xcode 10.0 or above for running any AR applications. The Xcode installation time may vary depending on your internet speed, ranging from one hour to two hours. Once Xcode is installed, go to Spotlight using Command S and type Xcode. This will open Xcode editor for you. First thing which we see is the screen where we get three options to create a new project. We will be selecting create a new project. Then we will be redirected to a new window. Here we can choose our application type. There are options for iOS, watch OS, TV OS, Mac OS and cross platform. But for now we'll be using iOS as we will be creating applications for iPhone. In iOS also, there are predefined structures like single view app, game, augmented reality, master detail app, and many more. But for convenience, we will be using single view app. Consider this as a vanilla template because by choosing other templates, we will get lot of extra code which we may or may not use. By choosing single view app, we will be adding things as and when required. Go ahead and click next. Now on the next screen, we need to enter our product name. That is our app name. The next option is the team. Here you need to select your Apple developer account. Apple also provides a free account. You don't need to go ahead and buy a paid account unless until your application is complete and you're ready to deploy your application on App Store. Below this is the organization name. If you have a company, then you can enter the company name. If you don't, then just enter your own name. The next option is the organization identifier. This is com dot your organization name. Again, we can just type in com dot organization name or your own name. Bundle identifier is a combination of organization identifier and your project name. Finally, we have to select the programming language that is Swift in our case. Make sure to uncheck all the three check boxes below and click on next. The next thing which the Xcode will do will ask us to provide a location where we can save our project. So just go ahead and select the location and press create. Make sure that the source control checkbox is unchecked. Now, welcome to Xcode editor. Your first project has been created. In the center, you can see the standard editor where you can see all your project settings. 
from display name to bundle identifier to version and team selection. It also shows you the deployment info like the deployment target and the devices you are targeting for your app. Now let's start with the walkthrough of Xcode editor. On the top left, on the top left, there is a play and stop button, which can be used for playing and stopping your application. Next to this is the option where you can choose the platform or the simulator where you want to run your application. This is the list of all the simulators available in Xcode. If you have connected your iPhone or iPad with the laptop, then the devices attached will also be shown in the same list. You can select the device for which you want to build your application. I am selecting iPhone X. Next to this is the status bar where you see the status of the application. Currently it's showing as ready. So when I build the application, it also shows as launching, running or build fail. In case of errors and warnings, it also shows the errors and warnings in the same status bar. Now let's see the navigation pane on the left. This shows you the project file structure. Here you have both the code files like viewcontroller.swift and the design files main.storyboard. When clicked, you see the section in the middle where you can design your app. Now if you want to design and code together, then in this case, two circles on the top will be helpful. The button with the two circles is used to split the section in two parts so that now you can see both your design file and the code file together. You can zoom in and zoom out using the mouse scroll wheel to reduce the size of your design window. Now you might be feeling that we have reduced the screen size too much. So you can also hide and show certain panes to increase the working screen size. For that, there are three options. If you go on the top right, you can see three options. This hides and shows the navigation pane. I'm hiding it again. The extreme right option hides the attribute pane, or also known as the inspector pane. And the middle one shows and hides the debug console. So now you have got ample amount of space to increase the screen size and you can place your design file in the center with the appropriate size. Now going back to the navigation pane, there are few other options which will interest you. One of them is the error and warnings area. So here it shows any error and warning which is produced in the project. Let me create an error for you. So now if I don't declare a variable properly, then it generates an error. And you can see that the error is shown in three places. In the navigation pane, on the status area, as well as on the line. Now let's take a look at the debug area. Any application debugging messages are also shown in the debug console. So let me print some debugging message for you. Now, if I run this application, we should be able to see print in the debug console. So status bar is showing launching. And now when our application is run, it will be shown as running application. So now our simulator is open. You can see that there are buttons on the simulator. You can also use the buttons and build any functionality and test the functionality of the buttons also on the simulator. So now the application has already run and because there is no design, the simulator is completely blank. But if you see the debug console, it shows the message hello because that's what we printed. This area will be very helpful when you will be actually debugging your application because the error messages details will be shown in the same area. The last pane was the inspector pane on the right. So when you are coding, it is not of much use because you see only two options. One is the help and other is the file details. But when you are designing, for that let me first close the code file. So when you are designing, you will be doing 
lot of actions like adding labels buttons and maybe views and many other options so in this case let me first add a label onto our mobile screen for this you need to go to object explorer you can keep it in a little bit side now here you need to select label then you can drag and drop the label onto your storyboard once you do that you will realize oh one second guys i have kept my application still on running so i am pausing the application so now coming back to the storyboard so when you have dragged and dropped the label you will see that the text is also label so what if now you want to change the label to packed for this you need to go to the attributes window here if you click this button you will see all the properties related to this label starting from its name its font type alignment highlight color and everything so let's change the text first so now you can see that the text of the label has also changed in the storyboard now let's increase the size of this label and also center line it we can also increase the font size or maybe font type for that matter and click done you can also change the background of the display for this select the view and change the background so you can go and select the color for that and now accordingly change the label color to white so now let's relaunch our application but now we see that the word pack is not in the center of our mobile screen so let's align it first let me see the entire screen by zooming out now grab the label and place it in the center now you can add new constraints using this button at the bottom or you can use the next button and select reset to suggested constraints and now the label will be placed in the center and the constraints are set for that you can also change the view here it's showing as iphone 8 and we want to build our application for iphone x so we can select the device because this will help us in designing the right application for our project and the target device as well so i'm selecting iphone xs and you can also change the orientation from portrait to landscape or keep it portrait so i'm keeping it as portrait so now you will realize that our label is suddenly again not in the center so let's realign it for that again go to this and say reset to suggested constraints so let me realign it and then reset to suggested constraints yeah so now let's run our application again so now you can see that the word pack is in the center of our application once you have run your first iphone application on the simulator now you want to run it on the iphone for this you need to create a free apple developer account you need to go to developer.apple.com create a free apple developer account and then sign in to xcode with this free apple id you need to go to xcode and then once you have created the free apple id you need to go back to the xcode editor and click on the main project here in the journal settings you will see that the team name is missing for you it could be selected as none so now go ahead and add the account enter the apple developer email id click next enter the password and now a new apple developer id will be added to xcode in case in the entire process if xcode asks you for your username and password keep on entering the username and password and always allow don't select deny in any of the situations because xcode is trying to create certificates for you 
now we can close this window and now in the team section you can see that i'm getting an option for my personal team select your team and xcode will generate signing certificates along with provisioning profiles for you now the final step is to add the iphone or ipad to your mac device so that it can be displayed in the list here currently you can see that there is no iphone or ipad attached to this device so let's go ahead and attach my iphone do make sure that your laptop and your iphone are on the same wi-fi connection or else the application will not load now i started sharing my iphone screen on the laptop using the software called reflector now let me also connect it using the data cable to mac for iphone name to get reflected in this list on the xcode we need to refresh the list so let me unselect and reselect now if you scroll up you will be able to see your iphone device we will select this iphone and now hit run and within few seconds you should be able to see your packed application on the mobile device so you can see that we have got an error saying could not launch packed them and it clearly states that we need to go to general device management and trust the application so let me do that for you so here you can see that iphone is asking me to trust my application named pack demo i click on trust and allow and now you need to click okay in xcode and again rerun the application and this time our application is loaded and we can see the pack label in the center of our iphone application this process of loading the application into your iphone device is also known as side loading So now you know how to run an application in the iPhone simulator as well as on your iPhone or an iPad. Next important step to look at before creating your native AR applications is a brief introduction to Swift. Swift is a pretty new language for developing iOS apps. The earlier language used to develop iOS apps was Objective C. Swift is very similar to C sharp. It has a easy syntax. and requires you to have basic coding skills the current version of swift is swift 5 and that is for xcode 10.2 for any further details on using swift you can go to the official website mentioned in the link so this is the official website for swift here you can find all the syntax and valuable examples required for running swift in your application in this section we learned how to install xcode and did a walk through of xcode interface along with creating a small application in ios we also learned about important links to learn more about swift 